So you're interested in doing a programming project around machine learning or data science. Great. So look, I'm here to show you some open source free data sets that you can find on the web that have, and there are a number of different sites that have a lot, a ton of free open source data that you can access. A lot of the open source data that we can get comes from the government. The US government and also foreign governments publish a lot of data and you have access to it. That's the great thing. They make it available to the public. So you can download and uh, access their tons and reams of data and analyze it all you want. So first, data.gov. Data.gov, like I said, they have a lot of different links to different data sets on that site. If you just go to this data.gov URL, there are a whole bunch of different data sets that you have access to through that site. Um, next, uh, NOAA, National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. I actually did a project with NOAA, uh, so I can tell you they have a lot of data on oceans, uh, temperatures, currents, all this kind of stuff, uh, as well as environmental data. So they have sensors, millions of sensors everywhere around the entire planet. And they, they uh, consolidate all this data into huge data sets to analyze the environment. So all of that data is available publicly. And then Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, bls.gov uh, slash data. Uh, they have employment and unemployment data, of course. They have inflation and price data for different uh, product categories. So you can check out that. I've also done a project with the Bureau of Labor Statistics on inflation data. So that's another uh, big, huge source of data that you can download. The U.S. Census Bureau has a ton of data available, and that's all on demographics. So demographics would be things like uh, geo geography of where people live, zip codes, all this kind of thing. So you can get a lot of different uh, data on that. And then there's also time series. In fact, most of the government data that you can download is time series data because they collect data on a weekly or monthly or yearly basis. So they publish this data in time series fashion. And especially the economic and financial data that you get is going to be all time series data. Next one, um, Bureau of Economic Analysis. They have a lot of GDP data, corporate profits, savings rates, etc. Federal Reserve, of course, they have uh, numbers that roll up into the GDP calculation. And also currency, interest rates, payrolls, that kind of stuff. Quandall is actually not a government site. It's a pri private uh, website, but they have a bunch of different websites related to stock data, financial data, economic data. And some of those they make available for free. Some of them you have to pay for, they sell. Uh, but they, they have a ton of different data. They basically aggregate a lot of different data sets into their site and make them available to people. Internationally, data.gov.uk, they basically make all the, the UK government data available to the public on data.gov.uk. So that also is a great site to access data sets. UK Data Service is probably another one that also has a ton of data for the UK. So census data and a whole bunch more stuff. Uh, it's basically aggregated, collected, and all, all organized onto one date on website. So World Bank, these are a couple international ones. World Bank has data on different countries. So you can look by a specific country if you want to look at for data on Zimbabwe or Kenya or something or whatever. Uh, you can drill into that. You can, but you can also look at global data. You can look at census, demographics data, geographic data, health, income, GDP, agriculture, whatever. They've got all that. Poverty, um, you name it. So World Bank is a great data source. IMF, International Monetary Fund, they have a lot of data on uh, financial and economic data. Also uh, currency exchange rates and stuff. And commodity pricing. And again, a lot of this stuff that you get from the government sources, IMF and World Bank especially, is going to be uh, time series data because they're they're basically sampling uh, data points on prices and stuff on periodic basis, whether it's uh, hourly, weekly, daily, monthly, whatever. And then opendata.go.ke. So this one is a specific .ke is for Kenya. Kenya specifically publishes data on basically everything. They've got probably 15 different categories on that site. And you can, you can look at agricultural data or educational data or wildlife data, water data, health finance, whatever it is. And then uh, Data World, data.world, uh, is another great site that has uh, data on a lot of different countries, international data on different countries that you can drill into. And Open Data for Africa consolidates a lot of different data sets for the entire continent of Africa. So different governments for each country of Africa, they have data consolidated onto this one site. So you can access a lot of different data for a lot of different categories, like agriculture, energy, and stuff like that. Uh, but it's all collected in this Open Data for Africa site. So those are a lot of different government data sets. These typically are a lot of economic and financial data is what the government publishes or uh, uh, demographic data and census data. 
Um, most of this fits into those categories. So let's look at some other data sets. There are um, non-government related data sets. Kaggle, which is a huge data science website, it's a data science competition website, they publish a whole bunch of different data sets. They just make them available. Some of them are actually cleaned up so that you don't have to do any scrubbing of the data yourself. Some of them are just raw data sets. But they have a variety of different data sets. Some of them have been used for competitions. Other ones are just uh, published data sets that you can tinker around with. So it's great to experience uh, different set data sets that they have available on Kaggle. And there are a lot of different ones. Some of them are retail related, like a Home Depot data set or uh, Walmart or things like that. And then some of them are more specific stuff on like Twitter or something like that. Amazon reviews. So Amazon has published uh, 35 million product reviews from uh, six and a half million users. And you can get access to the Amazon reviews through the Stanford website. Movie ratings, there are 20 million movie ratings available through Group Lens. It's called their Movie Lens data set. Uh, Yelp reviews, Yelp has published a data set of 6.7 million reviews. And it's uh, a combination of reviews. They also have pictures, businesses, IMDB reviews, or 25,000 movie reviews from IMDB published here on, on, the, um, on the Stanford site. And this is good for sentiment analysis. Twitter, again, this is a Twitter, you can do sentiment analysis on the tweets. There are 160,000 tweets available that you can do sentiment analysis. It's perfect for that. Airbnb has a big data set. There are a lot of different data in the Airbnb data set. So you're going to have to look through that. That's organized geographically by city uh, or metro area. And then um, the UCI data sets. UCI has consolidated a whole bunch of different machine learning data sets that you can play with. And they put them all in this one site. This is actually a great site with a bunch of different data sets to look at and choose from. And then um, Enron emails, in case you're not familiar with Enron, hmm, if you think back to 2001, there was this massive energy scandal uh, where Enron, one of the biggest energy companies in the US, went bankrupt almost overnight. It imploded and big scandal. So 500,000 emails from 150 of the top managers in the company were made public. And this is that data set. You can actually see how the whole thing spiraled out of control and crashed and burned. So that's kind of cool. And then spam base, if you want to try to distinguish spam emails from non-spam emails, this is good for that, spam base, email base. Uh, Jeopardy questions, 200,000 Jeopardy questions. And this is in JSON format. It has basically the question, the answer, the, the date that the show went live, all that. It has a bunch of different data on those questions and answers from the Jeopardy series, uh, the game show series. And then the Gutenberg eBooks, they have, I think, a couple thousand books now published on the, the Gutenberg site. So there's basically texts of the books in a text format, and you can do text analysis on those. So that is another great data source. And uh, there are also big image data sets. So ImageNet has 14 million images of objects. So image-net.org, one of the biggest image data sets that you can go to. And Google has 9 million image URLs with labels. So most, of, I think those are all labeled, actually. So which, uh, by labels, they basically put tags on the images so that you, you, um, you know, if there's a picture, for example, of a tree, it'll say tree, green, leaves, things like that. It'll have those tags on it. And then the Microsoft Coco data set, 330,000 images. About 200,000 of those are labeled. So some of them are labeled that you could use for a training set. Some of them are not labeled that you could use for test sets, which is great for a data science machine learning project. Labeled faces in the wild. These are all labeled. There are 13,000 faces, images with names on them. So uh, this is a great data set if you want to do facial recognition. And some of them actually have the same face in there multiple times. So if you detect one face, you can try and find that same face in the data set a second time. Stanford dogs, there are 20,000 images of dogs, 120 dog breeds. So that's a nice data set if you like to look at dogs. That's pretty challenging actually, but that's actually a facial recognition problem. And then autonomous cars. Uh, there are a bunch of different data sets on autonomous cars. These are a few, you can probably Google some more. The Berkeley deep dive is one of the biggest ones. It's a massive data set. You'll never be able to download the thing because it's just gigabytes and gigabytes of data and it's in video format. But there are 100,000 videos with 1,100 hours of uh, high definition driving. That's gonna be good if you wanna analyze video for obstacles and things for, uh, for real time driving. Belgian traffic signs, there are 10,000 images of Belgian traffic signs. So if you wanna to try to write a program to recognize signs, this is a good data set for that. 
the Bosch small traffic signals, this is actually in Germany, it's a .de site, and this is basically traffic lights. So recognizing whether a traffic light is red or green. And WPI traffic lights, they also have a pedestrian data set and a lane keeping data set. In other words, white line, dotted line, yellow lines, et cetera, on the side of the road. And pedestrian, whether or not a person walks in the road, how far away they are, et cetera, on the sidewalk, uh, recognizing people. So these are data sets on the WPI set. And the WPI data set is all from Worcester, Massachusetts, and it's all in the summertime. So UC San, Di San Diego has a data set they call LISA. That is for vehicle detection and traffic signals. So that covers a lot of different data sets that you can look into. I'm going to post this in a text format on my GitHub site. You can download it with all these links and you can check out some of these data sets if you're interested in doing a data science project or machine learning project on a publicly available data set. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And if you have another data set that I didn't cover and you want to share, add that to the comments down below. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Joe James. Bye.